Greater World of the UK Coast is a very special place. It's teeming with life. It goes from some of the minutest forms like the plankton up to the marine mammals that people might be familiar with like dolphins and also seals. I'm Juliette Brody and I'm a full-time seaweed researcher at the Natural History Museum. And one of the projects that I'm running is the Big Seaweed Search. This is a project that is the first of its kind in the UK. The Big Seaweed Search is a joint project between the Natural History Museum and the Marine Conservation Society, trying to find out what is happening to the seaweeds in relation to environmental change. Hi, I'm Jazz and I took part in a seaweed search last year with my girl guiding unit. It was an amazing experience. I started to love being near the ocean. I got to spend lots of my time with my friends in the outdoors. Why are seaweeds so important to our UK coast and marine life? They're really the foundation of much of these shallow coastal habitats. So architecturally, they form the habitat. Around Britain, there's as much kelp forest as there is forest on the land. So if you lost all that habitat, you'd lose everything that lived with it. All those thousands of species that live in it, where would they go? What would they feed on? Now, I think if we lost all those seaweeds, we lose all the oxygen that they're making. We lose the protection that they provide us, acting as a barrier to wave action. The world would really disappear underwater in our shallow seas if we lost our seaweeds. My favourite type of seaweed is kelp. What can my results from the big seaweed search tell scientists about climate change and how it affects them? Your observations are incredibly important. Kelp forests are disappearing in many parts of the world or they're changing their distribution. The consequences of that for coastal erosion may be very serious. Monitoring our shores is really important. It's something that we're not able to do because there aren't enough of us. But if you can go out and if you can monitor, say on an annual basis, that will enable us to conserve and to manage our coasts for the future. When I go out on the beach, I really carry out very similar activities to what you're going to carry out in the big seaweed search. Science is really about observations. So I go down onto the shore and I find a region of the shore that I want to study and I will usually start from the bottom of the shore and work my way up and I'll just observe what I find, record what I find, very much like you're going to do for the big seaweed search. We've chosen 14 species for the big seaweed survey and in the guide they're grouped into three categories which reflect our scientific questions. Marine life can tell us all sorts of things about the changing environment. So there are certain species which are changing their distribution that we might like to think of as indicator species. So the groups that we're looking at are indicative of the three major environmental changes, increasing sea surface temperatures, ocean acidification, and the increase in the arrival of non-native species to our shores. So how can you help scientists like Julia carry out the big seaweed search? Well, it's quite easy. You download a big seaweed search recording form from the web and go explore a strip of the beach. In the form, all you need to write down is who you are, where you are, what type of beach you explored, the types of seaweed you saw, and how much of each you saw. Remember to take lots of photos, and it's as easy as that.